discussion about conformity and deviance, it's important to understand that culture can play a role in this too. And the work by Geert Hofstede really illustrated how some cultures, and even within a culture, we may be more driven by the notion of individualism versus collectivism. And so when Hofstede first established this theory, it was really thought that Western societies like North America and Western Europe really played into the idea of individualism more. And individualism was the idea that when we go about our daily lives and we plan for our future, we think about ourselves. Maybe a small bubble around us, but a really tight bubble if there is one. That when we think about our goals in life, we tend to think about what we want to establish. As teenagers and as young adults, we want to think about our career path. And that might mean moving away from our parents and establishing our own network, buying our own house, having our own car, climbing our own career ladder, and establishing our own goals. It's the idea when you think about your self-esteem and you think about feeling good about yourself, it's when you as an individual are doing well. And this is the idea that in really individualistic societies, we tend to care about being number one. We don't care about the collective group. So it's more about being the first in your class at the math test or being the best player on the team or winning the scholarship. And so it's the idea about reaching your own goals. And so in the workplace, this might be someone who wants to constantly promote their own work and show their boss that they're a strong worker and show how they can improve. This is very different from what Hofstede argued happened in collectivistic cultures. And this was thought to happen in non-Western societies. So in societies in the global south, as well as in East Asia, it was thought that people were more considered uh, thinking about the community first. So rather than thinking about themselves as individuals, think about themselves in terms of their placement within their family group, placement in terms of their city community or their village community or on their team. And then instead of focusing on competition and being the first in the math class or the best person on their team, they wanted everyone in school to learn well, or they wanted the class to be happy, or they wanted the team to do well, or they weren't putting their neck out at work, more so they wanted to see the team at work to succeed. So they're more interested in group-centered goals. We've seen a lot of work on this individualistic and collectivistic idea, and we've seen some criticisms of it as well. Some of the support has really played out. We can see individualism and collectivism come out in how people make conversation. In more individualized societies, people tend to introduce themselves by like, hi, my name is this, and I do blank. And by do, they usually fill it in with a career or a major or what they're studying in school. Versus in non-individualistic societies, they tend to maybe shape their conversations differently. Instead of saying, hi, here's my name, this is what I do, they say, hi, I'm from here. And another question that tends to get asked very early on in the conversations might be things like, how are the kids? Or how is your community? Or how is the family? And so it might sound very odd to us if you were to walk up to a stranger and say, hi, what's your name? How are the kids where you're from? But that was considered to be the marker of success if their children were doing well in their home community. Now, over the last couple of years, we've actually found that individual and collectivism can occur, occur in lots of cultures. And then in large urban centers, we can have lots of niches. And within one city, you might have some neighborhoods that are more collectivistic and some neighborhoods that are more individualistic. And so it can really be a blending. For instance, let's say you grew up in Canada, but you grew up on the East Coast in a small village area where your ancestors have lived for decades. You know everyone around you and everyone is relatives. You might have a more collectivistic viewpoint than someone who grew up in urban Toronto, let's say. And so even within Canada, there's lots of room for collectivism and individualism.